Welcome back everyone. Time to do another still worth it or, you know, still worth buying review of 2020. And this time we're talking about later part of 2020. Now, funny enough, the other day we just got confirmation that the iPhone 12s are going to be announced next Tuesday, which is October 13th. And that's going to be some wild stuff. I literally cannot wait for this to happen. And before we get there, let's go ahead and talk about pretty much almost that midpoint of number of numerical sense of the iPhone 12 series and that would kind of be the iPhone 6s plus I think it's probably the iPhone 6 plus is probably the better way to go about doing it but with the 6s plus I have so much love for this phone I have so much admiration for this phone and I think in a lot of ways it's probably one of the better priced iPhones I've seen in a long time obviously it's not perfect by any means there's a lot of flaws with it but I think with the 6s plus the fact that it's still getting software updates and everything is an extremely huge asset of this device now this wasn't the first iPhone I ever used as a main phone it was actually the second and with my 6 plus I had a pretty good time with that I didn't really have any problems with it but with the 6s plus I kind of saw a lot of things that I had with the 6 plus and I was like man the 6s plus just does a better job and even now in 2020 when I look back at the 6s plus I don't think like oh it was a small upgrade from the 6 plus or 6 or anything like that I actually think it's probably one of the biggest upgrades from one iPhone to the other and funny enough we really don't think that because it was a visual it wasn't a visual difference you know they looked exactly the same so you would assume they were the same that wasn't the case at all we look at the phone you know that we have now the iPhone 10s to the iPhone 11 Pro I'm sure there would be a lot of people out there who would say oh the 11 Pro is so much better because it has more cameras and it looks far better but honestly like I upgraded from an iPhone 10 to the 11 Pro and I really didn't see that many differences to be completely honest and I made that video and I made videos saying that like 30,000 times and not saying the 11 Pro is a bad phone and I'm not even trying to say it's not the best iPhone like it's obviously the best iPhone but the iPhone 6s plus has really showcased some of the biggest improvements that have ever happened in any iPhone and the fact that it's even still somewhat relevant in the later part of 2020 is super impressive in and of itself now I think the biggest issue maybe with the 6s plus would probably be the way it looks you know when we have like phones with very slim bezels and everything and then we look at this phone with a 5.5 inch IPS panel versus all the OLED panels we have I'm sure a lot of people may be a little upset but again if you don't want this you don't have to buy it you know you can get an iPhone iPhone 10 or something like that but again I, I really don't care too much about the way this specific phone looks it came out in 2015 it's five years old you know if Apple made a phone like this now in 2020 well they kind of did with the SE2 but if they priced it you know like at a thousand dollars then that's totally different you know if they're trying to make a budget phone or something I guess it's kind of okay but the 6s plus also brought that force touch display in it which is really awesome now I mean no devices really use force touch they use have to feedback but still totally okay and you have that home button on the front as well which you know some people prefer we're all wearing masks right now so it wouldn't hurt to have touch ID to be honest but I think the front is okay it doesn't really change that much to be honest a lightning port and headphone jack on the bottom which is really awesome and on the back you have that aluminum back and what's funny is is that you can probably pick up an iPhone 6s plus for like less than $150 in a lot of places there have been a couple of budget phones that have came out phones like you know the pixel 4a phones like the galaxy s20 fe even phones like the samsung galaxy note 20 that technically have plastic backs on the back you know versus this thing that has aluminum all around it and this phone feels more premium than those phones not saying those phones are bad but you know that kind of shows a you know testament of what apple was able to do with the 6s plus at that point in 2015 now at the very top you have a single camera sensor and i think for a lot of people out there you know a single camera sensor especially for me you know I like having multiple cameras but back in 2015 you know this was probably I think the best camera or one of the best cameras that came out that year it's a single 12 megapixel sensor and I remember using this phone's camera you know as a daily phone I was using it as my main phone and I actually had not only did I have a pretty good time with it but that camera was something that was really impressive you know I liked having the ability of you know not only shooting 1080p at 60 but also shooting 4k videos now I never really shot 4k which is funny because you would assume that you know oh i make all these youtube videos and stuff i would probably do it but i never really did i just stuck to 1080p at 30 but i think it was more so the mental aspect of you know this phone being able to go up 
there if I need to. It's something that really put me at ease for most of the time when I was using it. If I was away from my, you know, main DSLR at the time, I would still be able to use this iPhone. And, you know, it takes pretty decent photos still. It looks great as long as you kind of brush off, you know, the camera lens and kind of make it look a little cleaner. And I don't know the best analogy, but maybe like with like an electric car, for example, if you have like one that has like a 500 mile range and one that has like a thousand mile range, and let's say you're traveling like 300 miles every day, I know that sounds crazy, but you would be kind of a little at ease with that 500 mile battery, wouldn't you? You'd be like, oh, like, I don't know, like it, it's definitely going to make it, but I'll definitely be scared versus having a thousand miles. You'd be like, oh, that's great. Like I can go there if I need to, but I'm probably not going to do it. My travel is 300. It's the same thing with this 4k at 34k at 60 even 8k it's like you're never going to do it but having the capability of doing it, it just puts you a little bit you know makes you feel a little bit better and this camera i think is perfectly fine you know if you're taking photos you don't have portrait mode or anything but for a single camera setup from 2015 i think is totally okay you have a 5 megapixel front facing camera that shoots 1080p videos at 30 frames and again if you're gonna make like tiktok videos if you're gonna do like snapchat selfies and stuff like i think you're gonna be okay honestly that's pretty much 99 percent of what i do on a phone whenever i'm using the camera it's usually that front facing camera and i think this camera is okay it's it's definitely not going to wow anybody. It doesn't have any crazy features, but I think for a majority of people out there, like I stated, it's probably going to be okay. So for a 2015 phone, this camera sensor gets a thumbs up for me in my books. Now, software wise, this thing is pretty much ending off with iOS 14. And that's pretty much what the consensus is. That's what everyone has said. And I totally believe it. I have no reason to believe why it would go any further. Now I might make a video later on, maybe talking about why it could and why it couldn't like I've done before. But genuinely, if I had to say it, I think it's going to end off at iOS 14. The iPhone 7s are going to end off at iOS 15. And maybe the iPhone 8s are going to end off at iOS 17. Potentially, I don't know. But that's kind of what I'm assuming. So software wise, that really pretty much covers up this phone for the most part now performance wise we've i haven't really gotten too many improvements i would say in terms of the performance unfortunately ios 14 did kind of take a hit on the performance a little bit all across the board it's not just this specific phone it's pretty much all iphones that are on ios 14 are a little bit slower than how they were on ios 13 so again not a deal breaker nothing to you know, completely cry about but it is something to keep in mind now this phone has that apple a9 chip a dual core CPU and two gigs of RAM on each model. And I think the performance wise, it's been pretty decent all across the board. You know, if we're taking iOS 14 out of the equation real quick, when I was on iOS 13 on it for the whole entire, this whole entire year, it was a really good performing phone. Really anything I threw at it, it was perfectly fine. You know, if I needed to do a quick video or whatever on it, it could handle it. And I think even on my second channel, I may have filmed, I definitely filmed a lot of iOS videos on that second channel of the iPhone 6 Plus, but if there were any specific videos, I may have done it. And I think, like I stated before, this this is one of its biggest assets is the performance factor when you're having a phone like this that's still getting software updates and that has you know this type of performance from 2015 and is still somewhat relevant that is a testament to this phone like i stated before now i don't think this phone is the fastest phone in the world or anything but a really good thing to kind of keep in the back of your head is that this phone if there's a problem with it right now if apps aren't opening properly if this or that is happening and there's an issue most probably if a lot of people are addressing and it's not just you know a specific problem with you apple will actually probably end up fixing this problem through software updates and that's why this phone is still so relevant it's still getting those software updates and that's why i think it's super important for this phone and for me to reiterate the fact that this phone's getting another software version tomorrow or next week or whenever it's another huge asset of this device so performance wise i think it's good enough for the most part i personally wouldn't like using it but if i had to use it as a daily phone i think i would probably be okay with it i'd probably be complaining a little bit like oh why is it so slow or why doesn't this open or what isn't this but i think for the end of the like at the end of the day i think i'd be okay i i don't know so in terms of performance, I think that pretty much covers it up. Now ending it off with the battery life, this thing at launch had a 2,750 milliamp hour battery. Now fast forward to 2020 in the later part of this year, I think this battery life is probably okay. It really hasn't gone down that badly, but the big thing to keep in mind is that I think software will have a little bit of an impact and you know, it'll have a you know pretty big impact when it's the first generation of software like iOS 14. But I think the biggest thing and the biggest problem with all these older iPhones is not only just the you know, battery life and all that stuff in the software versions but definitely in the battery health you know when this phone came out it had a hundred percent battery health you know it was a brand new device the more and more you use it the less and less that full size battery is technically so it's not at that full 2750 anymore it's probably at like 
2500 or most probably less than that. It's probably like 2000 maybe, depending on how much this phone was used, how hot it got, how much you deteriorated over time. And, you know, for me personally, this battery life is about the same that it was on iOS 13. And that battery life was maybe a little bit worse than iOS 12, but I still think it was like pretty okay for the most part. However, like I stated before, if you're somebody who needs a lot of battery, and that's why I think this would probably be one of the biggest problems for me personally using this phone in 2020, would probably be the battery life in my opinion. It's not the end of the world, but it is something to keep in mind. So in terms of battery life, that pretty much covers it up. Now, if I had to go and you know answer the question, is the iPhone 6S Plus still worth buying in 2020, in the later part of 2020, I would honestly probably say maybe. You know, If you're somebody who needs to use a side device, if you don't want to use it as your main phone or whatever, and you just want to use it in case your phone breaks or you want to give it to your little kid or something, then yeah, by all means, you know, an iPhone 6S Plus, this phone is still supported, you know, it's still getting updates. There's really not that much to hate about it in that sense. If you're just trying to use it for like a day or two or a week while your phone's broken or you're trying to do whatever, I think it's perfectly fine. But if you're trying to use a phone every single day of your life, I think I would probably go up, if you could, up to an iPhone 8 Plus. I think if you have to maintain that big size and if you have like an extra $150 to spend, an iPhone 8 Plus is a superior phone still. It's still not only getting updates, but the performance is still super relevant. It has great cameras, multiple camera sensors. The battery life is like about the same as this phone, if I'm being honest, is there's really not that crazy of a difference. And you know, you're getting true tone, you're getting a lot of different things on that phone as well. Now the 6S Plus I think is great for um, like a few people out there. But like I said, if you have a little bit more money to spend, I would recommend an iPhone 8 Plus. But with the 6S Plus, you're still getting a decent camera for a 2015 phone. You're getting a decent build quality. You're getting decent performance. You're getting decent software updates. It's a decent phone overall still which is surprising because it's five years old, but it doesn't really excel in anything anymore. And that's why I think the iPhone 8 Plus is probably the better way to go if you had to go the very basic levels. But again, if you have a little bit more money to spend on top of that, the iPhone SE 2 is probably the best way to go above all budget phones right now. So that really pretty much covers it up. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So me so much if you guys can hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My my Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel. More importantly, than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.